Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lee and Low Books 2021 Showcase. My name is Delisa Corey, and I am the Marketing and Publicity Manager at Lee and Low Books. For our agenda for today, I'm going to walk you through a quick introduction to Lee and Low Books. Then our editorial team will introduce our beautiful picture books, chapter books, and early readers, and also our novels for older readers. Then at the end will be a sneak peek at a few of the titles at our in our excuse me our 2022 list. You can find a list of all the books we'll cover today on our website at the link you see on the screen, which is also available in the chat box. We'll drop that in for you. And of course, check out Edelweiss or leanlow.com for information about all of our titles. We will be live tweeting this presentation at Lee and Low using the hashtag LLBooks2021. Follow along and tweet with us. Uh, we welcome all of your comments. You'll receive a follow-up email early next week with a link to the recording of the webinar, as well as a special discount code on our website for the books we've shared today. To tell you a bit more about Lee and Low Books, we were established in 1991, which marks our 30th anniversary this year. We're proud to be family owned, one of the few minority owned publishers in the US and fully independent. And all of the books we've created over the last 30 years serve our mission to publish diverse stories all children and young adults can enjoy. We take special pride in publishing the work of debut authors and illustrators of color. We introduced the first book by talents like Caldecott winner Javaka Seto, author Paula Yu, author and illustrator Don Tate, and as well as the first novel co-authored by Cybert winner Tracy Sorrell. We discovered many of these talents through our two annual writing contests for debut writers of color and indigenous writers, the New Voices Award for Picture Books, now in its 22nd year, and the New Visions Award for Novels. The submission period for these contests opens every spring and closes on July 31st, so that means they're open now. Be sure to share with writers that you know. We'll announce the results of the 2021 New Voices Award in January 2022 and the New Visions Award in April 2022. So please keep an eye out for these announcements. Our books are available through all major distributors and retail platforms, and our new titles and much of our backlist are available as eBooks through all major eBook distributors. At leeandlow.com, you can also find teacher's guides, lesson plans, author interviews, and other resources for our books, as well as our ever lively open book blog. Before we jump in, we're excited to introduce CULTS, a new pre-K dual language curriculum. CULTS, or Cultivating Oral Language and Literacy Talents in Students, is a research-based early childhood curriculum from the Center for English Learners at the American Institutes for Research. CULT promotes the development of foundational and pre-reading skills, as well as oral language proficiency. To learn more, check out our website or contact Jill Eisenberg at jeisenberg at We're also delighted to announce that we're now participating in the Bookshare program, which makes our novels accessible to qualifying readers in braille, audio, and large text formats. You can visit bookshare.org for more information. And if you're an educator or administrator, our wonderful educational sales team is standing by every minute of every day waiting for your call. Our team is happy to work with you to craft a collection that suits the needs of all your students. So now without further ado, on to our picture book editors. Thanks, Jalisa. Hello, everyone. I'm Jessica Chavarria, Senior Editor at Lee and Low Books. And I'm Candace Costin, Associate Editor. Candace and I are honored to speak today on behalf of the Lee and Low Picture Book team. Our fellow picture book editors are Editorial Director Cheryl Klein and Editor-at-Large Louise May. 
You'll hear from Jaleesa again and Stacey Whitman, the publisher of two books, a bit later when they present our novels. Okay, so now on to the fun stuff. Kicking off our 2021 list is The Electric Slide and Kai. This exciting story is a double picture book debut for writer Kelly J. Baptist, author of the middle grade novel, Isaiah Dunn is My Hero, and illustrator Darnell Johnson. Everyone in Kai's family has a cool dance related nickname, except Kai. Kai wants nothing more than to earn a nickname from his granddad, but he knows his dance moves are just plain bad. So he practices his dancing with the hopes of redeeming himself at his aunt's wedding reception. Kai's dancing improves, but more importantly, he learns to have fun with it. With encouragement from his new uncle, Kai is able to bust through his apprehension and bust a move on the dance floor. This story is a celebration of Black boy joy and showcases a beautiful blended family. In a starred review, Kirkus Reviews called this story an all-around wonderful book that will inspire laughter and perhaps even a little dancing. When that review came in, I definitely did a victory dance. Uh, I love that book. Uh, speaking of smooth and graceful moves, I'm delighted to present Butterfly for a King, Saving Hawaii's Kamehameha Butterflies, created by the fabulous cyber medal winning team of Susan L. Roth, and Cindy Trumbore, who previously brought you Parrots Over Puerto Rico, The Mangrove Tree, and Prairie Dog Song. And like all their collaborations, Butterfly for a King is an accessible nature adventure story that focuses on environmental stewardship and species preservation. The story begins with the creation of the Hawaiian Islands from volcanoes thousands of years ago and takes us through the reign of the great King Kamehameha and the 2009 naming of his namesake butterfly as Hawaii's state insect due to the efforts of a group of fifth graders. This led to the awareness that the butterflies were disappearing and the formation of a project that has involved professional and citizen scientists in restoring the butterflies natural habitat and introducing butterflies in places where they were once found naturally. Additional information about these efforts can be found in the back matter. Since its release, it's received two starred reviews. Booklist noted that Butterfly for a King is a beautiful story, beautifully told, and SLJ added that the book is a triumph. If you're longing for more beautiful images of nature, please check out our next title, If I Were a Tree by Andrea Zimmerman, illustrated by Jing Jing Song. And if I were a tree, Two siblings journey into the woods and celebrate the trees that they discover by using evocative verse that speaks to all five senses. If I were a tree, I know what I'd see. Hills misty with fog, the life in a log. I'd see blossoms appear and tiny new deer. A web draped with dew, the dawn turning blue. Meanwhile, the kaleidoscopic illustrations show their journey through the woods, ending in this triumphant picture. Every image is packed with details of birds, animals, bugs, and other creatures that readers will love discovering. Kirk has called the illustrations breathtaking and added, young readers will want to experience this book over and over again. And we couldn't agree more. Absolutely, Jess. Those lovely illustrations are worthy of poetry. In our next title, young readers learn how the smallest experiences can inspire haiku. Kiyoshi's Walk is written by Mark Carlins and illustrated by Nicole Wong. After Kiyoshi watches his grandfather, Eto, compose a delicate haiku, he asks, where do poems come from? To show him, Eto leads him on a walk through their city where they notice small details, a leaping cat, a lost teddy bear, the sound of wings. With each sight, sound, sense, or feeling inspiring a beautiful haiku from Eto. Soon, Kiyoshi discovers the answer to his question, that poems come from the way the world outside of us meets the world within each of us. And he also finds the courage to write a haiku of his own. As School Library Journal said in its starred review, whether employed to invite children and adults into writing or as a nurturing read aloud, this is recommended for all collections. And Kirk has added in its starred review, see, hear, touch, taste, smell, and imagine poetry all around you. 
Jess, do you think Kiyoshi's interest in poetry began with a love of books? Oh, for sure. We're all book people here. And as book people, we want to share our enthusiasm of books with everyone we meet. But like Kiyoshi, you might wonder how that initial spark starts. How do you get a child to love reading? Thankfully, the next book on our list, which was created in partnership with the William Penn Foundation, gently shares how to foster an early love of reading in children. I'll Build You a Bookcase by Jean Fahey and illustrated by Simone Shin is written in simple, sweet rhyme and shows the magic of being surrounded by books. I'll build you a bookcase before you are born that's made out of boxes from shoes that were worn. For books we will read in the soft morning light and books we will read before saying goodnight. So let's build a bookcase and then we'll build two for nothing is better than reading with you. As you can see, the illustrations showcase a multicultural cast of children and families throughout. And what makes this a truly standout title is that it's available in four bilingual editions, Spanish English, Vietnamese English, Arabic English, and Mandarin English. We think it makes a perfect addition to any home library. And finally, rounding off our spring list are two new books in the popular Confetti Kids series. This early reader series features five friends from diverse backgrounds that learn to navigate common childhood challenges, new experiences, and the world around them in a realistic and kid-friendly manner. In the protest, Lily leads a rally to save their community garden from being demolished and made into a parking lot. This story geared for ages four to seven shows how even the youngest among us can be socially conscious and active in our communities. It received a starred review from Kirkus. In Pablo's pet, Pablo learns to deal with the loss of his beloved pet fish, Ruby, with the help from his friends and family. The book delicately portrays how children can process grief and loss and how to honor the memory of a loved one. Our Confetti Kids series is now 10 books strong and perfect for children who are just starting to read independently. We hope you check them out. So that wraps our spring 2021 picture books. What's coming up this fall, Candace? Let's just say this fall is going to be quite magical. First, we have Magic Like That by Samara Cole Doyen and illustrated by Geneva Bowers. In this celebration of Black girl magic, our protagonist draws confidence from her natural beauty and her hair's versatility. As she waits for Mama to finish her latest hairstyle, our heroine reflects on the many amazing styles she's donned in the past. Each spread shows readers how natural hair embodies the natural world. Like here, our heroine's hair is gathered into a high puff reminiscent of storm clouds. And here her hair is set in stunning Bantu knots like mighty monuments rippling across a sunset horizon. What I love most about this book is that it's not about the main character learning to love her hair or herself. She already appreciates her natural beauty and draws power from it. The magic continues with My Magic Wand by one of our favorite authors, Pat Mora, and adorably illustrated by newcomer Amber Alvarez. This collection of original poems follows a spunky young girl who is closely based on Pat Mora's granddaughter as she enjoys a year of growth, creativity, and discovery, starting at age five with writing her ABCs and planting a springtime garden with mom. In summer, it's time to learn to swim, just like a fish, a slithery pesacita. When summer turns to fall, more experiences abound, especially learning to ride a horse and caring for big old Moosey, the family dog. The book ends with her sixth birthday and a fun celebration with her diverse family and friends. Next on our list is Nibby's Water Song by Sunshine Tenasco, illustrated by Chief Ladybird, two native creators making their picture book debuts. Nibby here is a thirsty, thirsty girl who just wants a drink of clean water, but only dirty water comes out of her tap. The rivers and streams are mucky too, and the little bottles of water she receives are soon gone. But when Nibby bands together with her friends and they work hard to make change, 
Together they find a way to heal the water and she becomes happy, happy Nibby. The energy and child-centeredness of this book make it a terrific read aloud and a wonderful companion to this year's Caldecott winner, We Are Water Protectors. Here to tell you more about Nibby's Water Song is the book's author, Sunshine Tenasco. Hi, my name is Sunshine Tenasco. I am an Anishinaabe from Kitaganzini, Quebec, Canada. I am the mother of four, and I wrote this book called Nibby's Water Song to bring awareness about the lack of clean drinking water in so many First Nations communities in Canada. Uh, my community is an hour and a half from Ottawa, Ontario, and we still don't have access to clean drinking water for everyone in our community. And so we are not the only uh, reserve to face this issue. So many First Nations communities do. And um, so we, I put this story together and it's beautifully illustrated by Chief Ladybird. Um, and it's about this beautiful Indigenous girl who goes on a mission to find clean drinking water and does it through song and dance in a beautiful and powerful way. Um, and so it was important to me uh, for an Indigenous illustrator to come on board and um, to bring these, these characters and this powerful message to life. So I hope you enjoy it and uh, thank you. Also this fall, we're excited to release three paperback titles. How Far Do You Love Me by award-winning author illustrator Lulu Delacre is a beautifully illustrated I Love You story with an international lens. The Barber's Cutting Edge celebrates everyday mentors as a kid tries to stump his favorite barber with vocabulary words. And Super Cilantro Girl by former U.S. poet laureate Juan Felipe Herrera is a superhero story about a girl who gains mysterious powers and uses them to rescue her mom, a U.S. citizen who's being held at the U.S.-Mexico border. Both The Barber's Cutting Edge and Super Cilantro Girl have been out of print for a long time, so we're very excited to be giving new life to these wonderful stories. We're also bringing two well-known Lian Lo titles out in Spanish. Cycle of Rice, which explores the traditional world of rice farming on the beautiful island of Bali, and the mangrove tree, the true story of Dr. Gordon Sato, whose mangrove tree planting project transformed an impoverished village into a self-sufficient community. That's all for 2021, folks. Jess and I are going to make way for Jalisa and Stacy so they can tell you about the exciting titles coming from two books. Thank you, Candice. Um, I am Stacy Whitman. I am the publisher of two books, which is the middle grade and YA imprint of Lee and Lowe. And my fellow novel editors are Cheryl Klein and Elise McMullen Chiapti. Um, I'm so excited to go through our 2021 middle grade and YA titles. So first let's start with Boy Everywhere by A.M. Dasu. It follows 12 year old Sammy and his family who live a comfortable middle-class life in Syria until the civil war comes and they're forced to flee. So often, those of us who are lucky enough to live in stable countries think of refugees as so different from ourselves. But this book is a poignant reminder that we could be them, that it could truly happen to anybody. The author, A.M. Dasu, worked with refugees and Syrians still in Damascus to get the details that are truly representative of their experiences. Here's the author herself talking about why she wrote the book. Through Boy Everywhere, I wanted to focus not only on the arduous journey a refugee takes to get to safety, but also what and who they leave behind. I wanted to challenge the narrative that refugees are needy and desperate and, and instead show the reality of their lives, the choices that they're forced to make. I wanted to explore how hard it is to leave home and show that if it weren't for the war, most refugees would never have left. And more importantly, the Syrian refugees I know across the UK and my friends in Damascus were keen for people to know that they had good lives and were forced to leave. I wanted the focus to be on who they were and are, on their identities, not just the temporary political status attributed to them in their new country, 
I wanted to show the sheer desire refugees have to work hard and re-establish themselves and their hopes for a better, safer life. And it was important that the story reflected and amplified the voices of not just one, but many refugee experiences. Uh, that's why, you know, you've got the story of Sammy's family and of Adam's and others. And, you know, refugees are ordinary, hard-working people who experience extraordinary challenges and surpass them. They are resilient, brave, and hugely inspiring. And I really hope that readers will connect with Sami and see how easily this can happen to anyone. No one sets out to become a refugee. You know, no matter who you are or where you're from, we have many similarities. We all have the same hopes and fears. And I hope that this, through this book that people will realise that we mustn't focus on our differences, but instead focus on what we have in common. And I hope that Sammy's story will bring us together, build empathy, help to challenge stereotypes and break down barriers in our increasingly fractured and judgmental society. Boy Everywhere is out now and it was named one of the Guardian's best new children's novels and has received three star reviews from Publishers Weekly, Kirkus, and Booklist, which calls it an absolutely essential read. Just a couple of weeks ago, it was also shortlisted for the Waterstones Children's Book Prize, so definitely one that you don't want to miss. Next up, if you're looking to truly decolonize your bookshelf, not just diversify, this book is a perfect way to do that. Strong as Fire, Fierce as Flame is by Supriya Kelkar, the author of That Thing About Bollywood, American as Paneer Pie, and Ahimsa, which won our New, uh, new, Voice, new Visions Award. And it received several star reviews. And this is another stunning historical fiction book set in India, this time in 1857. 13-year-old Mira escapes a life that she has no say in and certain death only to end up a servant to a British captain in the East India Company. When a rebellion against British colonizers spreads, she must choose between relative safety in a British household or standing up for herself and her people against those who are colonizing her land. Supriya Kalka wrote this book because of her child ex childhood experiences with classics, classic books. She once talked about how her third grade teacher read The Secret Garden to the class and said, I sat up a little taller, recognizing Indian characters finally in a book, but I quickly realized that they weren't thought of as equals in their land. They were thought of as less than, just there to serve the white characters the story was centering, just there to be part of the background in their own land. Decades later, thinking back on this, this experience, I decided to write a story that challenges who we center and whose story is being left out in the so-called classics. Sapria also found many photos like this as she researched research this time period, and I highly recommend reading her author's note and the other back matter about the Mem Sahib's writing about Indian people and the British East India, India Company's um, presence in India, all of which supplements this amazing story. Now, let's take a look at our fall 2021 middle grade and young adult titles. Jalisa? Absolutely, Stacey. So first, we'll start off with The Shadow Prince by David Anthony Durham which is a fun, action-packed, middle-grade novel in the same vein as the Rick Riordan Presents titles. Set in an alternate Egyptian universe that's powered by solar technology, it stars 12-year-old Ash, who shares a birthday with the prince and must compete for the chance to become his shadow or lifelong protector. It's full of friendship, Egyptian gods outmaneuvering each other, rivalries, danger, and secrets that Ash and his friends have to figure out before it's too late. This is David Anthony Durham's first middle grade novel, but he is no stranger to writing fantasy fiction. He's written several fantasy novels for adults that have won many accolades, and his work has appeared in the George R.R. R. Martin Wild Card series as well. So if you're looking for more fun, diverse books at the middle grade level in particular, The Shadow Prince totally hits the spot. Next, we have Black Was the Ink by Michelle Cole, which is a contemporary YA novel with a historical twist coming out in September. 
In Black Was the Ink, 16-year-old Malcolm is sent on a journey through Reconstruction Era America with the help of a ghostly ancestor. At the same time, he must work to save his family's farm in present-day Mississippi from being claimed by the state. This is a powerful story that shows how the events of Reconstruction directly relate to the present-day Black experience. And along the way, we meet some of the real-life Black heroes of the Reconstruction era, like Robert Small, one of the first Black congressmen, and Hiram Revels, the first Black U.S. senator to serve in the U.S. Congress in 1870. Though the Reconstruction era was 150 years ago, the time period is more topical than ever. Author Michelle Holes is a civil rights attorney with the Department of Justice, and we're excited to be publishing her debut book, which we discovered through our New Visions Award. Now we have Mio Sotis Flores Never Forgets by Hilda Eunice Burgos. You might remember Hilda Eunice Burgos' name from her first novel, Anna Maria Reyes Does Not Live in a Castle, which was named an ALA Notable Book and an NPR Book Concierge Selection. Now Hilda is back with a powerful new middle grade about family, pets, and other things we hold close. 12-year-old Mio Sotis adores her older sister, Amaryllis, who just got engaged. But then Amaryllis begins to change. When she's not avoiding their loving family, she shows up with bandages in odd places. When Miosotis finally discovers her sister's secret, she faces some difficult choices. What do you do if someone is in danger but doesn't want your help? When should you ask for support? And when should you try to handle things on your own? And what matters most? What Miosotis wants? or what's right for the one she loves. The novel was inspired by Hilda's past work with women in abusive relationships, and it also deals with tough topics like colorism and racial profiling, but there is some lightheartedness with some very cute dogs. Aida Salazar called this book, excuse me, an honest, often heartbreaking and beautiful look at a Dominican American family. We think this heartfelt novel is one that you'll never forget. Speaking of novels you'll never forget, Stacy, I know you have an exciting YA graphic novel to share with our audience. I do. That exciting young graphic young adult graphic novel title is The Witch Adult, oh my gosh, The Witch Owl Parliament from the Putabel Prey award-winning team of David Bowles and Raul III. This is the first installment in our Clockwork Curandera trilogy of reimagining of Frankenstein set in colonial Mexico, steampunk, green magic, alchemy, engineering, and a lot of action. This is a gorgeous graphic novel that fans of the genre will really be able to sink their teeth into. And we've made a book trailer to introduce you to the book. That look amazing. I, I just squeed every time I worked on this because it was just so fun to work on. And 
This book has been many years in the making, and we are so excited to share it with the world at last, not only in English, but in a simultaneous Spanish edition as well. And now on to a sneak peek of our 2022 titles. And for an introduction to that, our associate editor, Candice, will take it away. Thanks, Stacey. I'm excited to present a sneak peek at our 2022 picture book titles. First up is How We Can Live, The Principles of the Black Lives Matter by Lelena Garcia, illustrated by Karen Davidson, coming out on February 1st, 2022. Last year, Leon Lowe published What We Believe, a Black Lives Matter principles activity book. This powerful workbook presented the guiding principles of the Black Lives Matter movement in down-to-earth, kid-friendly language, accompanied by writing prompts and coloring pages. It received a great deal of praise from educators, and we soon heard from librarians who wanted to add the book to their collections, but they couldn't, as they don't buy activity books. Well, we could solve that problem. How We Can Live is the picture book version of the activity book, and it brings the principles to vibrant and colorful new life. Each spread explains one of the 13 guiding principles of Black Lives Matter, alongside an image of a real person, many of them present day or historical activists for Black Lives. Questions on every spread encourage discussion of and reflection on the principles. While a new introduction explains the history of the movement and its relevance for children, Back Matter offers adults some guidelines for discussing race in general. Both of the creators of the book are active school teachers with more than 35 years experience between them, and they have been deeply involved with the Black Lives Matter at schools movement. How We Can Live offers a beautiful and inspiring lens on the most important social justice movement of our time. Yes, such an important and critical, critical book for these times. Well, gliding onto shelves next winter is Marvelous Mabel, figure skating superstar by Crystal Hubbard and illustrated by Aliana Harris. This is the inspiring true story of Mabel Fairbanks who became the first black athlete inducted into the US Figure Skating Hall of Fame. The story shares Mabel's early life and her passion for skating. Nothing was going to stop Mabel from learning to skate not when the only skates she could afford were too big and clunky, nor when she was denied entrance to every skating rink in New York, New York City, Mabel simply practice on a homemade rink, of course. When she decided she needed more room to practice, she returned to one of the rinks that denied her entrance. This time, she refused to take no for an answer. Mabel went on to prove how truly marvelous she was on the ice and became a trailblazer in the sport. We're excited to release this incredible story in time for the Winter Olympics. From winter sports to the inspiring landscape of Ghana, Bottle Tops is a biography about contemporary Ghanaian sculptor, Ella Natsui, who uses recycled materials to create captivating works of art. This picture book was written by Alison Goldberg and illustrated by Elizabeth Zunon. As an art student, Ella Natsui looked to his culture, people, and history for inspiration and worked with materials that were close to hand, mainly recycled goods. He has this beautiful philosophy that if you touch something, you leave a charge on it and anybody else touching it connects with you in a way. One day while walking in Nigeria, he came across a bag of bottle tops and was inspired by their story and history. With the help of volunteers and his art students, El reshaped the bottle tops and joined them together with wire to create large scale tapestries, some large enough to cover buildings. I saw his artwork at the Met in 2015, and it's amazing the amount of texture and color and fluidity he achieves with each sculpture. This biography includes an author's note and a fun art activity that allows kids to create art with reusable materials. Now I'll kick it back to Stacy for a peek at one of our winter novels. And we'll be coming out with some great fiction too this fall. I mean, next spring, next year, not this fall. You know what I mean? Including Mara Zepeda, Monica Zepeda's debut novel, Boys of the Beast, which won our New Visions Award in 2019. Monica is a screenwriter and young adult librarian in South Car Southern California where she also grew up. This photo shows her in her teen years near Joshua Tree National Park. 
And Boys of the Beast fully demonstrates her love of the West, her understanding of teenagers, and her ability to write laugh out loud, laugh out loud dialogue and characters you'll recognize and love. The Route, 1,700 miles from Portland, Oregon to Albuquerque, New Mexico. The Boys are Ethan, Matt, and Oscar, three strangers who also happen to be cousins, one Jewish and gay, one evangelical and Christian and uptight, one stoner and carrying a secret, literally. The Beast is Grandma Lupe's 1988 Ford Thunderbird tur Turbo co Coupe, and the trip is going to change all their lives. We can't wait to share the final cover and more details about this book in the months to come. Look for it in January, 2022. And that brings our Lee and Lowe Books sh Showcase to an end. Now we'll, he'll we'll, now we'll hear closing remarks from our marketing and, and publicity manager, Jaleesa Corey. Thanks, Stacy. <laughs> Before we conclude, we'd like to share some of our virtual resources we're offering at leanlow.com, including this year's summer reading list, as well as our many other lists, including our anti-racism book list, we have a Native and Indigenous book list, uh, Juneteenth resources, especially it's, 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 Juneteenth is happening this Saturday, um, and many more. We also offer author read aloud videos, resources in Spanish to serve the needs of Spanish speaking students and families, and recordings of all of our educator webinars. You can find these resources and more at the URL here. Don't forget, if you're an educator or administrator, our wonderful educational sales team is standing by to assist you with your needs. Our books are also available through all major distributors and retail platforms. And our new titles and much of our backlist are available as ebook, excuse me, as ebooks through all major ebook distributors. And listed here are places you can find us on the web and on social media. Make sure to connect with us. On our website, you'll find more information about our titles, our resources, and our offerings. And that's all. Thank you so much for joining us and stay safe. Bye, everyone. <laughs>